Hello, time to put your pants on, ladies and gentlemen, or non-binary folk. Or not. Because it is time for So What Now. Welcome to the one and only quarantine show to get your creative juices flowing as our world is slowly but surely falling apart. Yes. Future Golden Horse Jing Ma Jiang winner or on that screen over there is the beautiful blue-haired Roxy She. Ew, please. I can't like do that? it with compliments. Like I grew up. Up. No, 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 no. I'm I never grew up with praise, so I have a very, okay, okay. And that future Academy Award winning actor over there is Anthony Ma. Uh, oh, isn't it weird? Like, praise is just so weird. My praise Asian is so weird. is, I is know. like, triggered right now. <laughs> Uh, also, it's kind of strange so. to hear you compliment me. I mean, like, I think it's natural for you to compliment me, but it's yes. really hard to say nice things about you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> also. I'll take it. I'll take the Future Academy Award winning. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. So, you guys, in light of recent mm -hmm. events, we know that there's a lot of stuff happening, and we hope that the most important thing that you're doing is still staying safe. Wear those fucking masks. I swear to God, I go out and I see people not wearing those masks anymore. And I'm getting like really fucking angry about it. COVID is still out there, y'all. All right. So it put is. on those fucking masks. And um, also Ooh. that you're taking care of yourself <laughs> mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Um, and also being excellent to one another. Okay. Because we all need some support right now. But seriously, Doing this show every week has been very therapeutic for Roxy and I, and Jack, the producer over there. So uh, we hope that we were able to bring you guys some, you know, some escape, some creativity, some laughter, and however you guys needed it, we were here for you, and hopefully we brought it for you. And I'm so sad to see you guys have finally, finally come up. Was that? I didn't understand any of this. <laughs> <laughs> the time has finally come. <sighs> so, uh, like what Rox was trying to say, this moment is incredibly bittersweet. And we're all very, very, we're just so happy that you were here to join us on our journey and join us here on our final episode. For now. Of So What Now. <laughs> I know we say on every episode how grateful we are that all of you continue to tune in. And, but for this week... You guys are seriously our best friends. Thank you so much for being here for our moment. We love you. So we can't be more excited to present to you our final guest for the final episode. This woman has been active in the indie music scene since 2000. And she's the year 2000, not 2000 years ago, the year 2000. <laughs> and she's recently released her most recent album called so Sarija? <laughs> Sarija? Sar I think it's Saraya, but we'll have her answer that. I mean, we're just butchering okay. this I don't, I don't already. know what that means, but we're going to ask that. Okay, yeah, we're going to ask that. <laughs> album Soraya. Yeah. And she's opened up for Jason Mraz. Her influences, I found this on Wikipedia. I mean, I know that it probably has changed by now, include Tori Amos and Bjork. Bjork. <clears throat> it's Bjork. <laughs> I know. And I gotta say, I'm in love with her new album. As a longtime fan, I'm eager to jump into how she's evolved as an artist and what she's doing to stay creative during this quarantine. May we pre present drum roll, please! Did we scare you? It does feel like you're taking a shit. Like all of that build up was like, oh, I gotta have oh, major God, diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> but it feels good afterwards. It feels so it's, good after. It feels incredible. Seven pounds lighter. It's yes. so good. How are you, I Jane? I'm good. How are you guys? We're so oh, great. We're How great. do you pronounce no. Sarija? Sarija is Sarija. <laughs> it's Sarija? See, I said it right. I said it right the first time. Around. It's Soraya. Oh, Soraya. 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 Drag the A at the end. Uh. Aya. Aya. Oh, Aya. Yeah. Aya. Soraya. Aya. Aya. Really bringing in our identity, our Asian identity, into your brand. Aya. 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 
<laughs> oh god. Oh, Get god. it together, oh, guys. This is Ooh. a great final episode already. It's I awesome. <laughs> All right, so Jane is going to be teaching us something special a little later in the show. But before we get to that, let's take a look at some of her work along with a snippet of her new music video from her album, Minotaur. Hit it, Jack! Bah! He was taken, one to understand. Got the light and gone to look for the upper hand. And the and every is the only one is the only one behind the terror where the gentle lives breathing heavy always counting on the scars and open Like, I remember watching you when I was in college back in those YouTube days. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to LA. And I know I've told you the story before when I first met you, but you probably forgot that I saw you at Pasadena Flea Market um, in oh. 2011 or 2012. And I just like, but you, I didn't go up to you. I didn't say hi to you, but I stalked you. <laughs> and then I was with my friends and I was like, you guys, that's motherfucking Jane Louie! Oh, ah! And, and, and like, back, no, stop. No, seriously. And then, and then, you know, that before, like, I was working in the entertainment industry, I was like, oh my God, it's like a YouTube person. No, oh I can't believe this is my life. <laughs> like, I'm going to write about this in my memoir, you know, like, I was so amped. And uh, I, and you know, the, the flea market was a really great place to creep on you. Because I can't just really an, tell. What's, you what's can't happening? really tell, but I followed you for wow. about a good 20 minutes. <laughs> but you guys <laughs> didn't, you never said hi? Not no, I was, I, I was like, I was, I was, I was real shy, you know, like, I, I was trying to, <laughs> yeah. uh, do you remember uh, what I was looking at? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you were looking at records. <laughs> <laughs> so predictable. I, I Ross, you gotta focus. Gotta I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I love that so much. It's it. such a flattering thing. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's compliment. You had your braid, you had a braid and you had glasses. Wow, this is really creepy. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop. You were looking at records. <laughs> yeah, stop. Okay, okay, stop. Okay, okay. 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 Regular programming. All right. Okay, Anthony, let's, all let's yours. Sorry. Okay. So, Woo! no, let's get to, that was great. That was great. Thank you for that. So, we're all in difficult times at the moment, and there's bad news around every corner. It's terrible. So, we thought it'd be always best to just start our show with a little positive news, with a little segment called News That Makes Us Go Ah! ah. Bumper! Bumper! <laughs> Oh. Is this like the most entertaining Zoom show you've ever been on? Like, this it's is so much amazing. Fun to watch it happen. Like, <laughs> I don't think that. You should do it with us next time. We'll go three, yeah. two, one bumper. Okay. You can do it with okay. this. You okay. can do it with this. Okay. All right. So, news that makes us go on, Jane. Well, so, Roxy and I will each present a topical feel good news story. And Jane, you will have to be the judge of which one touches your heart the most and makes you go, ah, the longest. So just longest. keep going, ah, yeah, longest. Ah, for 30 minutes if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No, uh, don't do that. Jack is saying don't, don't do that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah. Yeah. But I just want to say that out of all the episodes we've done, like, I'm the one that's winning so far. So my so stories are usually better. All What's the time. Score? Yeah. Uh, I the think score it's like three, two? Three, three, two, three, okay, two. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. so we'll it's see. just we'll because I'm naturally it. always better. It's, <laughs> it's not even supposed to be a competition. It's positive news that's happening around the world. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm just better than you. <laughs> okay, Rox. Yeah, ayo. Ayo. Yeah. All right, Rox. You ready? Yeah. 
All right. Wait, wait. Who's going to go first? Well, we can either do staring contest or uh, How about two people? Yeah. You want the same at the, both at the same time? Okay. Yeah, let's go. Okay. 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 okay, Jane, you have to watch us very carefully. Season. Like, who blinks first, okay? All right, here we go. I, I, three, three, two, one, go. And then we're going to go. Yeah. I'm on the round table. This is no. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Whatever, Rox, you go first. You always go first. Oh. All right, so this is my article. Um, I, I found this. I really was really, really touched by the story. So it says Principal rallies his community to serve 10,000 cooked meals to seniors during 40 days of COVID crisis in oh. India. So we know that India is suffering really badly from the pandemic right now um, because of just how many people there are and how, you know, there isn't enough resources to really provide care for everybody. So this man, his name is Sasi Kanta Dash, and he is the principal of Tagore Government's Arts and Science College in Pondicherry. And so he said, it has been my dream to give back to society and the nation. My soul guided me to take the first step. And on his very first day of feeding his community, he fed 250 people on day one. So he's a principal of his school and he ended up utilizing the cafeteria and volunteers and like his students and everything to really create like a soup kitchen for um, his local community, especially to the mm. elders who are unable to go to the pharmacy, unable to leave their homes. Um, and so he was just like, I'm gonna be the one to be able to provide care for these families and these elder citizens and whoever needed it. And so I wanted to really shine a light because we don't really talk about Southeast Asia and we don't really talk about India either. So um, I just really wanna shine a light on Mr. Sasi Kantadash who has such a big heart and he has fed over, I think, 10,000 people at this point with his efforts. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's, that's amazing. <clears throat> that's incredible that's, work. That's a, really that's a go in a rock. So, so uh -huh. the, the process behind this, Jane, is okay. Jack, Jack would text us the day before the show and go like, we need your positive news. <laughs> so that, so oh. that Rox and I would scour <laughs> through the internet. Um, it was hard. It was definitely hard this week. And I saw that article. Rox, great that you spot oh. spotlighted that one. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you got that one. I want to bring it back from India to our states now. And I want to highlight uh, and give a spotlight to the Asian American studies courses that are provided throughout our nation and the power behind it right now, where they not only educate our youngsters, about our history and our culture, but it also inspires our youngsters to help their communities and get amplified and start act activism within their communities oh. too. So uh, this little article was just talking about how these Asian American courses, study courses have really amplified individuals to, these young, younger individuals to start helping their communities. So for example, we have uh, an Isabel Yank who volunteered in a, a nonprofit group that served the poor and working class immigrants and refugees and used her language skills in Mandarin to call older adults and queens to check in on them during the coronavirus pandemic. And then we have another one of her classmates who happens to be a sophomore, Yuan Trin He, who joined a, another uh, group called Red Canary Song and there were a coal coalition that supported Chinese massage parlor workers, which there are many of them. I actually had a friend that that was one of his first jobs. So uh, help them to inform them and guide them through the unemployment insurance process. That is because that's just a headache. And then we have an another uh, another senior named Na Nafion Bari, and she raised money for COVID-19 patients living in Bangladesh after going through these Asian American courses, it really inspired all these, yeah, like these students to just go above and beyond and also come together. And uh, motive, uh, there's one story called uh, the Union of North American Vietnamese Student Associations. They partnered with this organization called Better Than One. And they had, uh, they, they, uh, they organized a collective of DJs and producers that were popular within the EDC music community. And they organized a event called Fresh Off the Vote that helped youngsters and motivate them to 
register to vote for the very important election later on in this year. So uh, that drew, that event drew more than 15,000 people and got more than 450 people to either register to vote or pledge to vote in November. So yeah, it's a lot of momentum and it's it's pretty crazy seeing our our uh, our community being upheld by, you know, the younger generation as well. So thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. So that that's my really touching too. Yeah. <clears throat> It's going to be a hard one. It's always really hard. So. That is a really hard one. Do I decide now? Is that what I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, okay, for me, it. how long will your awe be? Three, <sighs> two, one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay, that's 18. Good. 18. How's that? <laughs> How's that right? that was amazing. Okay. Okay. okay, now for Anthony's. Three, two, one. Oh. 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 I think that one's winning. Wait a minute. I think that one's winning. I, I think, think that one's win winning. Oh. Was that, was, that was the way, yeah, Anthony wins. Well, nice. honestly, Anthony, oh, you kind of cheated because that was like multiple <laughs> stories in one story. This is our final but episode. Honestly, I to win. No, it's, it's true. It's true. I think we're all tied now. But anyways, yeah. like, Jane, how are you? Uh, no, Anthony, I think that was a really, really, really great article because it's so timely with what's happening right now. And as, as you know, with... Um, you know, uh, I think the intersectionality and efforts between Asian Americans and Blacks during this time uh, is resonating more than ever. I mean, Jane, how are you feeling regarding with what's happening in current um, events? Uh, it's so crazy because it was, the, I feel like this year has just been the perfect cocktail. Uh, and continue, the theme continues. The, the cocktail of people have the attention span finally to things that normally our hustle takes takes away from right like going having to get in the car and go to work takes away from or having to come home and rest and decompress takes away from the fact that there are really important issues going on that will continue to go on uh injustices that will continue to happen uh regardless of our attention span and so this this time has just been both of course heartbreaking but also so necessary and it's mm -hmm. uh been incredible to see the amount of outpour uh and that there is this that th there's hasn't been anything th on this scale before mm -hmm. um and i just feel like on one one hand uh it it's I worry and I and I wonder about what will happen, but at the same time, this kind of disruption um, is has just been. It was never a matter of if; it was when, and mm -hmm. this is the time to do it. And uh, I think, if anything, it's there's there's. I actually feel like this is a very right time because people see it, and they have to. Uh, the thing that I worry about is COVID like then spiking because of all this, you know? And so, but, but in general, people beginning that work, that deep work offline it is it's now or never like, this is the perfect chance to grab it and just run with it. Uh, yeah. Because that, that, that piece of injustice that happened and so many that prior to that for decades and decades uh, has just, it was the final trigger and I keep hearing on the radio and the news media that like you know people are marching for George Floyd I'm like no they're not they they are but it's way bigger than that right. and I and I sometimes wish the news media would actually just get to that 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 Venn diagram quicker rather than keep saying calling it George Floyd George Floyd because yes while it is he he is a metaphor and for for something that is been so systemic and so inherent in our culture, uh, that I think it's important to support, important to voice, and really do that work, even if you can claim yourself to be anti-racist. Like, this work is never done. It's a constant effort. Um, 
that that that's it that's that's but how that's I'm also <clears throat> like i think not only happening in the united states right like we're seeing oh, yeah uprising of like people coming together and fighting back against abusers of powers and oppressors like jane i know that you've been posting about hong kong and that was your home yeah you yeah. know oh um <laughs> i'm sorry i just no. sort of brought that out of nowhere no, yeah it's it's important and i there there's I think, I think, and then following those two things without trying to compare, you know, like I don't want to compare pain. Uh, mm -hmm. And but I think I didn't know that there were uprisings also in Chile, Ecuador, Bogota. Uh, I had no idea that these things were happening around the world. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be this sort of um, voice because our world is kind of leaning towards a populist direction and there's this there's this collective this kind of like critical mass that's mm -hmm. rising up going no mm -hmm. what the what the f are you doing um with our lives and so uh, i think this is uh, an important time globally speaking yeah. we are literally living the star wars narrative it's crazy it <laughs> yeah. the rebellion versus where is my um, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, like it's so crazy. Okay, sorry, I know that we we went off a little bit, but I felt like we wanted to touch upon that just to get insight on what's happening. But um, okay, so we're gonna uh, veer our attention back to our right, glorious right, right. and beautiful guest, Miss mm -hmm. Jane oh Louie, and we're going to play a game about her. So um, <clears throat> this is going to be So What Now presents Social, social Media, media. Oh, no. Stalker! Oh, no. Okay, you want to do it with us? Ready Three, two, bumper. one. Bumper! Bumper! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <That's> so nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, Roxy and I have scoured through Jane's social media, and oh, we yeah. found two random pictures. It may be embarrassing, it may be, you know, very interesting. <laughs> Okay. But she, either way, she'll have to elaborate on them. Okay. okay. I go first. Go I for it. I know. I know. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Kowloon, you lived in Kowloon. I sure did. Oh look my god! Me. Wait, look at I you. I had that haircut like, too. Like <laughs> that haircut. Like I, I, I wish I kept that bowl. Uh, <laughs> that's a good little bowl right there. Wait, how uh, old were you? You're so cute. I, I don't remember any of this. I really? don't know. I don't no. remember. I just know this was, so I went to Kowloon. This was like, I. Uh, it looks like kindergarten. So I don't know. Four? Oh God, that you look that so five? sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you um, remember yeah. what it was like, like going to school back in Hong Kong? Like what are some of your memories back there? So I mostly remember sixth grade because that was around when I was about to leave and I think um you know we're in our uniforms we're in our uh, uh it was a really sweet school as a girl's school and um, I remember during break everybody it was like it made it like our job during break to run from our desks to the little food uh shop and get ramen noodles and like oh. smash them before you open the bag, right? And then yeah. take the MSG out, like uh, uh, sprinkle it onto the to the um, ramen, and then like shake it, and then just eat it like that. Oh, those are the <laughs> it best. Was so That's much so fun. bad it was so for good. you. <laughs> so so good, so good. Um, and I don't remember anything about this this time. It's so weird, like like. Coming to America, it's so weird to say that phrase. Uh, it, there, there's like, there's been like a weird break in my psyche where I remember the plane ride and very little from far before that. Like mm -hmm. I remember um, like the, the, the flat that I used to live in, um, you know, like, like photos like this and, and the way that they kept uh, records back then it, it is like kind of 10 years behind. <laughs> <laughs> and um they, but you know it it was a really sweet time of my life like i enjoy i remember enjoying childhood i remember having a really lovely group of little friends and um i'm still in touch with one of them in hong kong and uh yeah 
I don't know. But most of all, that bowl cut, though. <laughs> that bowl cut. Bring it back, girl. Bring it back. Anthony, I feel like you're close. You're, 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 you almost have it. Yes, you just need right. the bangs. Exactly. I just need, need, <laughs> need that, definitely. Your quarantine yeah. hair is so great. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. All right, Jack. Get mine up. Oh, <laughs> Oh man! So, I know that you're also a baker, and yeah. I wanted, and I saw, uh, you know, scoured through your 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 social media, and this was probably the only picture that showed all your baking talents in one. So I, I wanted I wanted you to elaborate on this one here. <laughs> so um, I was I forget when I started this, but I started to bake because I was bored. And I started to realize, that, like baking to me at, at that, you know, when I first started, it was just about following instructions, right? Like if you can follow instructions, you can, you can make something from the oven. And so um, slowly though, it turned into this kind of like, like hobby that, that helped me unblock my music writing. It was weird. Okay. Like, How? and so... Right. And so, you know, you, when you and you guys are writers and, and filmmakers, and so sometimes creativity works real ways, right? Like you, when you sit down and try to work at something, it doesn't always turn out. But if you have dishes to wash or something you want to make that is, that is science-based, like baking, it'll happen. Like if you do it right, you will see it grow. And so I would literally just sit in front of the oven and watch it like a movie, like, like watch it change and grow. And it was, it, it's so weird what happens when I'm, and I, when I'm watching or trying to, to create new recipes of new flavors, it helps me, that, that chef mind, like helps me undo some of the, the mundanities that I have in my head about songwriting. And so mm. uh, it, it helped me just find new ways to enter, like side doors wow. to get into songs and, and, hooks that I wanted to expand on and develop an idea, you know, because that's, that's what this essentially is. And uh, I love food. I love, I love eating. And so um, it's a good place to kind of understand like how to get, get like reroute your brain a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's, wow, that's, that's all. So- and so, that's so great. This it's like is, a process because it always be changing, right? Like it's like, oh, I thought I had a certain way of how I'm creative, but you're always yeah. finding new avenues in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the, I always get the question of like, so how do you write? And the fact is that there is no answer for that because it honestly doesn't, there's no formula. Um, and, and once you, even if you have a formula and you have a song, you end up destroying it in the process it, when you edit Mm-hmm. And, and the editing is really where the, the bulk of the work, the, the, the hard work is. Um, you know, in filmmaking, like the editing can tell so much of the story. Right. Um, and so this is just a part of that. And so making, so this particular picture is from Tuesday Night Project. And so they have these, you know, when Tuesday Night decided to cancel their uh, year this year. So every first and third Tuesday, at um, the East West Players Courtyard. They would set up this uh, night uh, of talent, uh, of music and poetry and spoken word and, and uh, kind of abstract art, visual arts, to support uh, uh, artists of different minorities, uh, LGBTQ, um, uh, women of color, uh, people of color. And uh, so this was a fundraiser for that. And I ended up baking like till five in the morning because I wanted it <laughs> fresh and just like Aww. hauled everything in, in boxes over and like that spread that you see was before the, the show opened and all of that was gone. Yeah. Nice. 20 minutes. Yeah. Look at <laughs> you. You're going to open up your yeah. own bakery in the future, girl. That's amazing. Wow. That's okay. So we're going to pick. We, like literally like Jane I just can't wait to pick apart your brain even more because it feels like you're such an open sponge like you it, mm-hmm. like just talking to you now and just talking about like your viewpoints on like how you see 
uh, your process, how you're open to different avenues of creativity. Like you're just such an open person. So I want to dig in into a little bit about like Asian American identity and how that cool. sort of affected you or if it ever blocked you. I mean, you came to the U.S. from Hong Kong when you were 12. Were you, did you come from a musical family? Like did, was this encouraged? Like how, tell us a little bit about that. Ah! Okay. Yeah. So uh, my dad sings karaoke. <laughs> Love. Uh, um, and I remember um, that I loved singing. I always wanted to be a singer and I knew that I loved music and I would sing in my room alone. Or when they were out, I would pick up the karaoke machine. But only when they were out, because I didn't want them to know that I loved it. Because I knew what my dad would say to me if they saw that I sang. And so one day I sang and I was enjoying myself. And then they, you know, they were out and I put it down. I was happy. And I turned around and my brother and my dad were standing right there. <laughs> and... And I literally, I was like, oh, and they, <laughs> and my, and my dad looked at me and said, do that again. Oh, nice. and I was like, okay, so I, so I did it again, <laughs> like there's no discussion, right? Uh, and I did it again and then I put it down and nothing was said, like they didn't say anything. Uh, my brother was like, okay. And then I walked away. I like when I went back upstairs <laughs> to my room. Reacted. <laughs> okay, do that again. Okay. okay. <laughs> what? It was so funny. Um, so anyway, I forget what I, why I was why I went there. But yeah, um, not really from a musical family. My brother took piano for a long time. He and I are very different. He's very classical. Um, and I was classically trained until like high school, and then I started listening to Tori Amos. Um, and it, she blew my mind. And so, uh, and I started listening to uh, Faye Wong, uh, <gasps> who sings Tori Amos songs. And wow. so when um. I, I first heard Faye Wong sing Silent All These Years in, you know, Cantonese and, and Mandarin. And then I heard Tori Amos sing it. And I was like, who is this Tori Amos singing Faye Wong songs? <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up just trying to figure it out by hand, by ear. Like, and so slowly started to kind of dig in away from classical music. Um, and then college uh, came around and got into music stronger. Uh, it was not encouraged. My dad very much told me, you know, Jane, for you, you can do something that you love or do something that gives you security. Um, he did not believe that they were mutually, uh, you know, not mutually exclusive. And uh, I, so I was a, a, a communications major for two years at UCSC and then uh, changed to music and switched schools and, and went that direction. And then like, like my family kind of, kind of had a, had a bit, you know, um, mm -hmm. but if I had to go back, I would do the same. It's, it's just, uh, things are just, it, like any industry, uh, there's stuff that you love doing. And then there's the 80% of stuff that you don't necessarily love to do. It's the, the business of each industry that's kind of like, oh, I don't love it. But to get to the stuff that you love, you know, it's easier to do the things that you can't stand to get to the thing that you finally love. And um, for me, like music, to be honest with you, uh, it's really the one of like two things I know how to do. Um, and so, uh, I, What's I the other lucky. thing? <laughs> What's the other? I'm oh, just, baking. <laughs> just baking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the singing baker. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, so coming, it was interesting to grow up in Hong Kong too because, you know, I didn't realize I was Asian until I came here because in Hong Kong, I didn't have to think about what I was. Um, and coming here, uh, I would dare say that I'm pretty new to the to the kind of vocabulary of Asian American uh, and love for being an Asian American. Um, and I can I, I would say like doing you know like I've just been about ten years old in that in that brain set and the mind mindset. And um, 
it's it's been an incredible journey to go from this Asian girl who wanted to be a white person. Like I, I very much did not want anything to do with Hong Kong. I wanted to like assimilate and the, the white, you know, uh, way of life was such an admired uh, idyllic thing that is that is more human uh, or at least even my dad would say like you know if you have to assimilate um, uh, you need to make friends that speak uh, English mm-hmm. because I was making friends that were speaking Cantonese only for a while and and so I just kind of turned my back on that part of me thinking that okay now I have to be this so uh, now it like I think around late college is when I started to turn around and just be like, you know, there's this Asian American love I have for, for being who I am. Um, and for the longest time in music industry, I didn't want to believe that my skin color had anything to do with um, how long it took to kind of get into the scene. Like when I was still uh, like fresh out of college and and living in San Diego, I was trying to get into the local scene and it took a while to kind of really get momentum uh, because they assume certain things when they see a skin color or mm-hmm. see a, a, a look. Um, and I was never in the in crowd, I feel like. And I would come into LA, do a gig and leave and never really got a chance to hang out here. I tried the scene in the Bay Area, I never got in. Um, and then it was finally like, coming living in LA and Tuesday night project which was the thing that I was baking for in that last photo where I found this family of Asian American minds and uh, supporters who just embraced me it was crazy and collaboration when I when I competed in collaboration it was like they just they were hungry they were starving for what they were seeing on stage and I had no idea that that was happening, that, 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 that I, who, who to me wasn't an Asian American artist, I was just someone who wanted to do music, was, was needed in, in the industry. Um, and, uh, uh, and so I just decided to move here. I, I found an incredible family here. Um, and uh, uh, I want to support and help other artists um and uh give voice to the asian american like sector in any way i can you know what i mean uh filmmakers writers and and what's crazy was 2000 like this 2020 this year was such an incredible year for asian american Mm -hmm. talent i mean the amount of shows theater shows movies like Netflix or like uh, Amazon original series, even PBS and, and comics. Uh, mm-hmm. It was, it's just been incredible. And um, I hope that keeps going. I hope that continues to rise. Hell yeah, James. Rise. We're all rise. part of this. Rise. 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 <laughs> Sorry, that was a long it, way. I'm kind of rambling a little bit. No, yeah. it was great. I mean, you you touched on the topics that we've all been taught, you know, like we've yeah. all talked about throughout each episode. So it was great to hear your rise and your growth. Through. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to dive in deep about your growth as, say, musically. Um, okay. So you went from Jane Louie to now Soraya. Soraya. I'm saying that right, right? Mm. Soraya. What first, what does Soraya mean? What is, what is, what is that mean? So Soraya is actually someone I met when I was mm, okay. in, in San Diego. She was uh, like a, a girl. Um, she was like 10 and she was with her mom at an open mic and I had just gone on stage. She's half Thai and half Dutch. And so I think Soraya is a name that's a Dutch name. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had gone on stage and I come down and mom comes up to me and, and she's the Thai one. And she said, uh, my daughter wants to talk to you. I was like, okay. So we go outside and I talk with her and she um, 
we, she didn't tell me her name at first, but we just started talking about life. Uh, and it's so funny because kids sometimes when, like when you, they're an old soul, you can really tell. And um, she was just in, interested in, I think having seen someone that looked like her on stage and what that means for me. Um, so she was asking me like deep questions for a 10 year old, like, so what do you want to do? Uh, what, what, how did you get, how did you, how, how are you doing this? Um, just very curious with these simple but well-intentioned questions. And so um, I, I, we chatted for like half an hour and then they left. Uh, and then I never saw her again. I had no way of communicating. And then um, there was a time, I think around like 2012 or so, where I kind of had a music block. I didn't, I was tired of the industry. I was tired of writing. I didn't know if I had anything else to say. And uh, I needed a break. And from that break, um, now coming back to music, the music now sounds different because I've evolved, you know? Um, and so I wanted something new. And I, and I thought of her um, and one, her beautiful name. Uh, and two, like, there's something about staying as a child that I, that I want to, to maintain. There's something really deep and, and intentional about this girl that I met. And so I took her name. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's like nothing that's that we would have thought there. would be the meaning behind like yeah. Soraya. But in terms yeah. of like you talking about like your musical evolution and coming back and adopting this name and this album is so transcendent, Jane. Like mm -hmm. it's so, it, there, I feel like it's saying so much, you know, beyond the lyrics, beyond everything. It's all encompassing. Like, sonically you know thematically what was your intention behind it so um i think going back to what you were saying earlier about like doing things a different way in one part of your life can change things in a different part and when i came back to writing again uh so for the first three albums i wrote everything alone i produced it with very little uh input uh, it was very, it was just me and the producer and we knew exactly what we wanted and we did it. Everything was ready to go when we, by the time we were in the studio. This time, one, I didn't want to write alone anymore. Um, I was done with isolation and I wanted <laughs> like, like, I wanted like people that can, that outside brains that can really fuck with this stuff, that can destroy mm -hmm. my shit for me, that can, mm -hmm. that can put themselves in it. Uh, I wanted a synergy um, and I found it. And so um, the, the writing part of it, for, there's two parts. Part one was written to um, uh, uh, Picasso's former lovers. And I wanted to bring these women out of his shadow because they oh, never get, wow. they never get the plaque next to their painting. You know what I mean? It's always his story. Fuck that. They taught him so much. One of the artists who's actually, uh, she, she, one of the former lovers who is an artist um, uh, is gonna have her retrospective. She's a photographer and a painter. Uh, she's gonna have an exhibit at the Getty soon once they reopen. And she like taught him dark room techniques that he then took on to his painting. Like these are incredible, talented women, and that's why he was attracted to them and passionate about, about what they were doing. She taught him how to use art to be political, um, and he ran with it, and which is incredible work that he did too. But at the same time, he was deeply cruel and abusive to these women. And so uh, when I started learning about um, him and these women, I just wanted to write songs dedicated to the muses behind these portraits that he was doing. And so um, I wrote half the songs for four of the women. And then the other half uh, is about my dad um, and kind of the patriarchy that was there. Um, when I wrote these two segments, they were, they were separate times. Like I didn't do them together. 
but what I didn't realize was they have a thread. And I think that's what's crazy about creativity is wherever your mind is, it doesn't even matter if you're consciously thinking intentional about like, I want to write something about patriarchy. You know, the album just became this thing about women um, and the evolution of it and how these, writing about these four women gave me agency to write about my dad, like to, 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 to break down some stuff that I had, that I wasn't alone. And so I wanted to do this album like with people who would be on board with that, be, be supportive of um, like giving, giving themselves into it really cre creatively. And um, I found three incredible people. Uh, yeah, and it took like three, three years. But you know, here we are. <laughs> Holy shit! And I released really it in the middle feminist of album. Hell yeah. yeah! Well, speaking of quarantine, yeah. Anthony, you want to ask about Minotaur? Yes, yeah. So you recently huh. re released the music video Minotaur in yeah. during during quarantine, right? So and mm -hmm. you recorded it entirely in, in in quarantine, and supposedly your director was there giving you feedback as you were doing the takes. Right. Yeah. So, what what was that process? And you like? shot on Zoom, right? And yeah, it was it Zoom. was recorded on Zoom. It was. Um, <laughs> Way to go! Hopefully, Zoom so, doesn't take a commission off of anything. But yes, tell us. I've been trying to tag them and be like, Zoom, check this shit out because it's awesome. But they haven't responded. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it was like he recorded. He pressed record on his end, and basically, we did like eight to ten takes of the song. Um, and Minotaur is written after a, a certain painting that has some characters in it. And so I was trying to, to find ways to embody these characters, basically. Um, and uh, it gets, you know, kind of dark and um, the use of light and silhouettes and dark uh, is in, very much in the video. Um, but it's about that power struggle. And I think uh, aside from fitting the painting, it also fits the quarantine mindset where we cannot like, we cannot predict what's going on with, with our minds because I feel like every day something is, something is new. We get weird and depressed and um, there's some dark bits that I've had to overcome during this time because rules are off table right now, right? Like I start thinking about mortality and, and what this all means and what I really want in my life. And, um, and so that, that kind of, by happenstance, fits in the actual technique that we were using, which is Zoom, you know, because it's, it's an isolation uh, factor in, in the actual making process. And so um, it, was, it was really fun to make. And all it was was Zoom. Uh, a ring light and I stacked like suitcases to, to put my laptop on um, and then I just let the music move me you know like um, trying to get into that mindset that's it you know it's it interesting like the way that you talk about for example you had to do everything he's instructing you how to use the light you know how to like like giving you guidance but you're the one who has to like maneuver everything physically in your space like i've been talking to my friends who are like yeah like i i i ha we're doing like this quarantine web series and i have to do all the lighting and like well i don't know i'm an actor like everyone's usually scared of like having oh. to be uncomfortable you know what i mean and like having to be hands-on about something that they're not used to but even your answer about that like it never felt like you're, ne you're never afraid of trying things uh i think I, that's that's youtube's uh, mm. uh process because in uh, when i was doing covers for youtube um i had to do everything because but like we have to wear hats you know what i mean that's the th that's the thing with the musician industry too is is musician industry is so DIY these days. There's resources literally for musicians to do everything. I never realized that as a musician, I had to learn how to use Final Cut, but this, that's what I have, to, I have to use at now. And so I have to do the editing, the producing, arranging, like uh, marketing, um, like self-directing, how to point the camera, how to get the sound. It's, um, that there's there's this, that stuff is priceless though you know like learning how to do that stuff is so important to understanding possibilities mm -hmm. it's like 
Um, and so uh, I love it. I, I, I actually feel weird. I remember first going into theater and there's a hierarchy in theater. Like you don't talk up at certain, you know, you don't, you don't talk to the admin. You talk to the director and the director can talk to other, other folks. Or you talk to like your stage manager, the stage manager will bring it to, like I don't have that kind of hierarchy. I just am all in, in all the bits. Because <laughs> um, I, I want to understand systems. And so, um, yeah, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it very much. And going off of that, we're going to transition into the next section, which is going to be your workshop. But we have something before <gasps> that, right, Ant? Wow, thank you so much for your insight, all those experience. You're you're like a true creative. <laughs> it's, it's so great. You know, and you just shared so much that <laughs> I love your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, kids. Thank you. We will be right back. We're going to take a little break. And after, and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This week's sponsor is karaoke videos that have nothing to do with the song you're singing. Oh no, Anthony, is this one of Barry's ads again? It's okay, Rox. He's done great. Let's just go with it, okay? Jack? Oh God. Jack! <laughs> Hit it! <laughs> karaoke. Whether you suck at it or you sound decent, everyone's still having a good time. But if you're Asian, it can mean life or death. Hello? Hi there. Uh, my name's Barry. <clears throat> Last name Chang. I am the CEO and CFO and the director of Chang Industries Incorporated. You might know of our fine products such as the workout program, martial art, and everyone's favorite new energy drink, Sherry Cola. I'm here speaking to you today because my mother said that people should know the face behind these products and that she's not getting any younger so she wants some grandchildren soon. Uh, I find that I have trouble singing when I'm distracted. Reading those pesky lyrics sure can be difficult when watching Beyonce's dancing, wow, or Usher's abs, wow, or even the fantastic production quality, wow. But worry not, because I have the solution. Inspired by my mother and her laser disc machine, I have the remedy for those dis distractions. Hit it, please. Introducing karaoke videos that have nothing to do with the song you're singing. Mesmerized by Michael Jackson's Thriller music video that transcended the art form of music videos forever? Don't be a nerd. Focus on what's really important, your voice. Belt out your favorite tunes to what looks like stock footage from a late 80s camcorder that belongs to that weird uncle your family no longer speaks to. We have it all, from the gorgeous woman walking aimlessly on a beach, the Grand Canyon, we even got the contemplative ponytail guy, and of course, everyone's favorite, the sky. Rock out to Bruno Mars with some eye-catching footage of flowers taking on a breeze. Sing your heart out to TLC with the sweet sight of public transportation. Prefer Chinese songs? No problem. We've got that handled with slow-mo footage of a couple dancing in a courtyard. Not convinced? Take a listen to one of our satisfied customers. The wrong video can ruin any karaoke performance. <laughs> but um, with karaoke videos having to do with what you're singing, I have finally found the perfect video that amplifies my voice. <laughs> Oh, God. 
Wow, now that was a stunner. Call or visit our website today. Bring out your best voice with karaoke videos that have nothing to do with the song you're singing. It's very approved. Wow. Wow. That wow. is, sounds like a total worthwhile investment. Jane, what did you think about that ad? I think it's really important. I think it's important to have these videos have nothing to do with what you're singing. Uh, it's like doing something else while you're taking a dump is so helpful in time and, and time management it's, and, and, and able to really like, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Wonderful. She's an endorser. Okay. So to get a laser disc of this fine product, use code SWN at checkout and you can get a dollar off of your purchase. It's usually $59.99 uh, $59 for one disc and $149.99 for two. What a deal. Anthony, the math makes <laughs> no sense on okay, that. Okay, whatever. It's, we, we love our sponsors. We love all of you. Thank you for sponsoring us all the way into our sixth, ep sixth episode. Yes. So now the moment that we've all been waiting for, Jane oh, no. is going to lead us through a workshop. She's already taught us so much. Teach, teach us, us more. more. <laughs> You're on the show, teach us more. <laughs> Take it away, Jane. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, the really bumper. great thing? Bumper? Bumper. <laughs> bumper. about this is you guys are so prepped and I literally have nothing smart to say. I feel like, <laughs> so I was watching some of your past episodes and like Randall Park and James Tang, like such incredible workshops and helpful and deep. <laughs> and I think, I think if anything, it's just so interesting. Um, uh, quarantine. Uh, you have uh, uh, a lot of important issues that are going on right now. And we, we, we are reopening, but at the same time, are we really ready? I don't know. Like, how, how, do you guys, how are you guys feeling, first of all? Are you guys ready to go out? No. I know, right? Me neither. I don't, think, I don't think I can. Um, and uh, so for the short amount of time that's going to continue, uh, however, well, however long that is, I feel like I, I the way that I stay sane. So there's the highly, like I'm, a, I'm a highly intense person. That when I'm working, I am working hard, but I'm also a highly dumb person at the same time. And I think that, that's what I want to dig into. It's, it's, it's the silliness and the, the, the other section of the Venn diagram, if you will, to bring into all the current events that are happening. Because we know how things are important. I know, we know public health is super important. And there's like this weight, there's a heaviness in the way that we feel sometimes. Um, and so it's important to kind of like stay silly. Um, and that I, I feel like that's how I've been able to meet the circumstances where they are uh, is to be absolutely serious in one moment, but able to uh, like generate a lift for myself somehow. And it's in the small, tiny things that we do every day. Um, so I bake a lot, like I was saying, and um, to, in order to kind of break bread with my friends during this time, I have been baking weekly and taking a drive. And so I love driving and I love baking. And those two things have been a combination of like me weekly making these things and sending them out to my friends at their doorstep. And I knock and I run away uh, <laughs> like, a, like a bandit. Um, I'm also weird in that I'm a, I'm a big introvert in that like, I, I'm not, um, I, I'm very friendly as you can see and I'm, <laughs> I hope. And, um, but I'm not, easy to get to know um, and I love people but at a distance like I'm uh, I'm really shy about exposing like being vulnerable and so um, 
baking and and breaking bread in this way is kind of my way to to say hello and reach out. And so I think it's important to find the things that you have that are easy, simple, and maybe silly to um, like lean into those things that can give you that 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 could actually become a sense of routine, possibly. Um, or if it's not a routine, even if it's just something that is there for you to look at. And so one of the things, and I wanted to talk to Anthony real quick, hmm. is, is that your room? This is my, my child's nursery. Oh, how cute! <laughs> my, my ten, ten month, so I'm hijacking his, uh, his room for the moment to his record. Room. I see. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was wondering, I was wondering, like, mm -hmm. Where, why, why is there no stuff on the walls? Ah, I've been lazy to, to, uh, to hang things on up, but I have like these, these paintings here of Ron oh Burgundy. I have, I have all these from my wife that she painted. Oh my God. I have, I have this thing, Cary Grant in North by Northwest. Awesome. <laughs> wow. But like, wow. I've been confused on where I want to place them. And then at the, I think about that so much where I just, I just give up and like forget it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So so um, I think Will Ferrell needs to go up immediately. <laughs> yes. And I feel like it, it's just like little things like that 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 will help so so much. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not it's not profound and it's not smart. You know, like it's just it's, it's this thing that to disrupt our vis our visuals. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So this room that I'm in right now. Um, was a wreck like I haven't I haven't been home in about a year and a half and this is the first time so I was in New York and the show canceled and I had to fly back and I've just been here ever since and this room was not livable or 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 workable and um to kind of reorganize our lives or like I have found a new nook to read in um just kind of like disrupting our our lives a little bit and so um I don't know that that's kind of really all I have to offer uh in addition to all the offerings that were given to you guys um so like Roxy is that is like how is your what is your day like I'm so curious oh how can I'm we inject crazy. I'm a Capricorn and I am a big fan of discipline. So I'm also an extroverted introvert. So like I love to get up at six in the morning. I just oh, went damn. hiking at Hermit Falls this morning, got up at five, hiked, came back, picked up <laughs> some stuff and then um, just did work until I had this and I um, keep busy. I love paint by name, but that is my thing. <gasps> oh wait. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> I can't hear myself anymore. Something happened. We can hear you. Oh no. Hello? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Hold on. Oh no. Uh... I love that she has has the the U log or whatever that is behind her. <laughs> oh, yeah. fire. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Uh 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 and I've been, you know, reconnecting with my violin, so that's been really nice. Oh. Yeah. And, um, and I, I love quarantine. I hated it at first. <gasps> I've really embraced it. Um, oh, I know that awesome. this time is blessed. And so, um, I just really love reading and cooking and I, I self-isolate. I like being alone a lot. So. Oh, it's so good. I know. It's <laughs> so good. Oh, yeah. I, uh, and I work and then, then I drink kombucha beer and then, um, I, I, no, this is, this time has been so fruitful for me. Aside from all the shit that's happening on the outside, it kind of gives you the, like that guilt. You know, I, I feel guilty, you know, like that I'm enjoying my time. Ah, uh, see, that's the other thing, is, is we judge our feeling. Nah, that's mm. so amazing that you're able to, like, I, I, don't, I don't hear that very often, right? Like, you don't yeah. hear people going, oh, this is really great. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm getting is, unemployment, and so it's just wonderful. Yeah. Like, yes, the me richest allowance. I've ever been. <laughs> and, and let me, this is the richest I've ever been, yeah. and I can just do this, never work again. <laughs> let me just, you know, yes. <laughs> just yes. like, I'm not mad. 
I'm not mad. I'm like, as a, and then like, you know, in the future, get a sugar daddy. I don't know. Like, I don't know who I was before this. I don't care. That's why transitioning back is going to be very hard. You know? I, I believe that. I believe that too. And, and what's weird is that I feel like once we get back, we're going to miss this. Mm-hmm. We're going to, there's a part of me that uh, will miss like the, the immediacy of things where when something asks for my attention, I can go to it immediately and, and dig in. Like um, I usually am just so such a freaking spaz that I, I, I just uh, knock things off the table. I, I don't pay attention. Right. And so that's really good. Um, and so how has it, how's it, how has this been for you um, and Anthony too, like creatively, has it been really hard or has it helped or just been different? Well, I think because of this show, we have uh, we have opportunities to be creative, you know, and I've leaned into, uh, I, I come from a YouTube background too. Oh, so cool. doing all these things, filming sketches by myself, that's, that's something that I've been revisiting and I find that I truly love doing mm. I, and I miss doing. So uh, we've been, we've been doing that and it's just been great. And, and I hold that as like a, a, a unique power that I have right at the moment. You know what I mean? Like, well, yes. I can write a sketch just like that. And yeah. I, I, and I'm proud ah. of myself for that. I haven't, I haven't felt proud of myself in a long time as far as like, you know, my cre- creative stuff. You know, so this is something, a feeling that I've latched on to, you know, thanks to this show. Yeah. That's awesome. And I just want to say that I really love Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I love Barry. He oh is for God. sure a fan favorite. Everyone yes. wants to marry Barry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> He's Barry. a sexy man. I'll pass on the message. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> He is a sexy man, for sure, for sure. Um, just staying creative, being creative. You know what? It, it's so weird. I feel like I'm so hard on myself all the time. Could be because being Asian, you're just, yeah. and, you know, when your family mm-hmm. didn't accept that in the beginning, it's like you're always trying to fucking find validation yeah. all the time. And then so when this slowed down and I was like, how I, you know, I had a movie that was supposed to go, blah, blah, blah. And like uh. during this time, I just let it all fucking go. I was just like, don't care and I like I'm relishing you know just every moment that I have like being creative I learned the kalimba I learned that it's on a chromatic scale so that was a lot easier to understand and then like just simple stupid shit that like that's right I me as a human being and me not like my identity as people knowing me as like a filmmaker or whatever like that's just too much fucking pressure like this show was very challenging for me because I never did sketches before, but that's really fun. <laughs> so thank you, Anthony, for bringing me out of my comfort zone. And Jane, you just talking about like disruption. I'm like, yes, like disruption, like it, it's effect, like whether it's internal or it's like external from like the outside world, we're constantly being challenged at this yeah. time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it literally hasn't stopped. And I think, uh, part of the creating creation process that I love is the destroying of things is the, is the breaking it apart and rebuilding it together. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, be it in a script, in a song, uh, or production uh, and like the disruption that the idea of the disruption is such a fantastic idea to me that I just, I like this time has really amplified it. Like I, I love it. Um, and as as weird as it can get, and as dark as I as I go sometimes, oh, like I've woken up where I'm just sad. Uh, I've woken up questioning my own validity and and what I'm really doing. Like I I released a record, I'm unable to play it. Uh, I released, you know, I've worked so hard at this thing, I'm unable to kind of really fully uh, let it live the way that I wanted it to live and how did that but that doesn't change who I am you know what I mean like yeah um and so uh I just yeah that's it uh, the, the, no yeah. <laughs> I think that was so great I mean that's a really great button I think the theme I keep hearing over again is disruption like you said yeah. it at the beginning and it keeps coming up again and I feel like that resonates so much with 
everything that people are feeling. So, um, Ant, oh, are you ready for final thoughts? I am ready for final thoughts. I'll be ready to do, point at another, our, our final thoughts, but also our final bumper that we're going to point to. Oh my God, this is our final bumper. Know, Jane, you're going to do it with it? <laughs> Okay, we're gonna say bumper on three, two, okay. one. Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> um, Jane, thank you so much for being on our show today. Where can we listen to your new album, Soraya? Go to uh, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, wherever, all the things. Wherever you, you guys listen, it'll have be to there. Check it out. Yeah, like you guys don't want to miss this album. It is fucking incredible. Jane is incredible. You. And you will, and just look at, just go into a deep dive on the internet and look at all her stuff from like the past how many years that she's been creating stuff. It is just yeah, so phenomenal to see her growth. Years. And she's a fucking yes. inspirational <laughs> human being. So, yes. oh, Anthony. Yes. Did you learn anything? <laughs> I learned. So much. Uh, well, uh, like I said, I'm going to go back to what I said. You are a true creative from, from, from just the idea behind Soraya and how you lean into the idea of the muses in, in Picasso's life and, and dedicating this to him and how that opened up your mind to creating something for your father about your father. It's, it's, I, so my final thought is, I think these things are sort of like what you said, disruptions, you know, like disruptions in your head, right? And then, and then you lean into that feeling and then you start creating, you know? Um, I, I find myself thinking like that too. Like there's something that just goes in my head and I just have to go, I just have to start writing. And I have okay. to like dedicate, dedicate my, my energy to this thought until it's done. So yeah, my, I, I guess my final thought in this little, nice little wrap up is just, Lean into those disruptions and you'll never know where those things will take you um, and get inspired by them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Rocks? Me? Final class. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I'm such a, uh, I would say to me, this is about openness because, you know, like I said, there oh, some people, have said that like oh there's passion and discipline oh no there's discipline and passion i'm sorry mm -hmm. or you know the reason why i ask about writing is because like a lot of filmmakers when we write stuff like we have so much trouble writing we don't know where to start and there are different like the artist's way by julia cameron says oh just do morning pages do it every single day but i just i'm just not that person to be able to sit down and write my free flow unconscious thoughts for however many minutes a day and I think to me, along with the disruption, because I think we've touched on that, is openness and an open vessel. <clears throat> mm. And to recalibrate the way that you've always done things and to not be afraid to challenge your own process. Um, because we're just like, oh, this is how I do things. This is my method. If, if I'm a mentor, this is what I give to my mentees. But how do you stop? Like, you could learn from your mentees, you could learn to just like unlearn. And that's a very scary thing for a lot of people because we work so hard to be so sure of something. And I think what I learned from this episode was just about letting that go, no matter where you are. Aww. Yeah. So Jane, we're not going to leave you out either. I think any final thoughts you have, words of wisdoms for emerging artists or people in quarantine, anything? Um, I have some thoughts for you guys. For the <laughs> okay. <two of> you. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Like I'm not. Uh, I'm not someone who feels like uh, I, I'm like a, a, a huge social light. You're like I'm not a, a crazy social bug, uh, particularly online. And and um, to have seen you guys do this together, and you guys, the, the fact that you guys take pride in what a mess it is. <laughs> Yeah, it says so much <laughs> about about who you are because that's life, right? Like, yeah. like to be so prim and proper doesn't really tell the story, and it's in the it's in like 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 heroes. Like you want to see the heroes be deconstructed, like you want to see them the, the weaknesses and and that are good. Um, they're human, and I love the fact that you guys are so 
hearty with this show. Like I feel so much heart. Um, and uh, the, that like in the time that you guys have been doing this, um, I've just loved watching both of you and you guys are so humble and you guys want to learn and, uh, and your guests are learning from you. Um, and you come with open arms for like what you've done and the people that you welcome into your world. And so um, that's, a, that's a lot to ask in this time, right? When, when a lot is asked of you, when a lot is asked of you to stay inside, be serious about you know, these uh, things that are happening all around the world, um, take care of yourself. And should you be creative? Yeah, you can be. Um, that there's all of the, your jobs, like your, your family, your life, your health, all thrown into the fire. But yet here you are and like making these things to share with the world and with the title of So Now What to Try to Help. Look at, like, like I, I have thought about doing that. I didn't do it. And so like there's a, there's a fantastic um, and generous heart that you guys have put into this. And I just want to say thank you. And I'm so oh honored <laughs> to be a part of this. Um, yeah. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. And, and, <laughs> and me, oh, that's so and like, we <laughs> hope you come back, whatever you guys decide. But I also wish you guys a safe journey on whatever else you guys have in store for you. Um, <laughs> thank you, so thank you Jane. <laughs> it's hard to accept head. praise. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. That is so wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <sighs> you. Anthony. Thank you. Uh, well, you guys, that time has finally come. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this. Goodbye for now, Jane. Jane, what's a good goodbye song? What's a good one? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think it's so great. That's a great. <laughs> 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 I think we um, sound great. Barbershop, tree, barbershop trio here. A hundred percent. Okay, guys. Oh, God, this is hard. This is a goodbye for now, everyone. But it's definitely not the end. Yeah, stay tuned for any future news and updates by following us on Facebook at So What Now Show or on Instagram at So What Now underscore show. You never know. We might be making a comeback. You know, yeah. So this you is Rox. I gotta thank you for this compliment. Uh, future Oscar winner. Oh God, it's all these like tingles on my shoulders right now. Oscar winner, Anthony Ma signing off. <laughs> and this is the future only fans, big boobed influencer, <laughs> Roxy. She saying goodbye to you. And Jane say goodbye. And this is Jane without pants <laughs> saying goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. We love you. Maryberry.net. Maryberry. Maryberry.net. Maryberry.net. And cut. Credits. Are you looking for me? I'm looking for someone. Where can you be? Someone. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name's Barry. Last name Chang. I have some very good news for you, and great news for my mother. Well, the fine people at Quarantine Video Meet called me the other day, and they were just as surprised as me when they told me that I had found a match. Hi, my name is Mary Maria Conception Rodriguez Del Castro, and I'm a um... Uh, a, um, sa a, a, a very um, sa satisfied customer of a um, quarantine video me. <clears throat> they set up a Zoom date, and I went into it very nervously. And, well, for my friends out there who know me well, all one and a half of you, you know, when I get nervous, my starts to twitch and quiver. 
uncontrollably. We, I, I uh, joined the, this um, video date, and uh, and uh, I got a little bit nervous. I also have this this. I was born with this condition where I have muscle spasms in my forehead, and I can't really control what my eyebrows do, and it's a little nerve wracking. When I signed on, she came on and she was wonderful what a man what a what a true specimen of a man <laughs> he just <laughs> check out this lady oh, here stop Perry. <laughs> she is quite the looker right yeah <laughs> uh, oh great are we are we touching we're touching oh, hands now got it. we're touching hands <laughs> I could, I could feel the sensation of warmth. <laughs> I feel so connected to you. <laughs> yeah. Funny joke. Yeah. Oh. Yay. <laughs> oh. 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 Ah. Oh. Wow. Oh. 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 <laughs> I've never smiled this much in my life. My face hurts. But it's a pleasurable pain. 